Hey everyone, welcome to Clarksville, Tennessee. You might have heard that Clarksville enjoys the reputation of being a city friendly to the military, and that's probably because of the proximity of the Army garrison at Fort Campbell. The city and the military are very much interconnected here. In fact, they have been for a very long time, since the earliest times of Clarksville. Today, I want to tell you about Lafayette's visit to Clarksville on May the 6th, 1825. I want to see how the Frenchman's visit is indicative of the military background of the city. Why did he stop here? And what did it mean for the locals? These are some of our questions for today. We have got some answers to figure out. So let us waste no time. Let us hit the trail. Let's follow the Frenchman. Right now I'm at the Clarksville Marina, it's also called uh, Liberty Park here. And it, it's basically the way in and out of the Cumberland River for the local boat owners. And I just thought I would start by giving you a little information about Lafayette's itinerary and why he ended up navigating by Clarksville in May of 1825. So Lafayette left New Orleans, Louisiana on April the 15th, 1825 on board a steamboat by the name of the Natchez. So he navigated all the way up to St. Louis. And after the visit in St. Louis, he went down the Mississippi River to the confluence of the Ohio River and the Cumberland River. And there, he changed the boat. He got on the steamboat mechanic. So at that point, he navigates down the Cumberland River on the mechanic. And on May the 3rd, he navigates by Clarksville the first time, but he doesn't stop here. He goes all the way to Nashville, where he's going to see uh, Andrew Jackson. He's going to spend some time at the Hermitage. So on May the 5th, 1825, after having spent some time with Andrew Jackson, Lafayette again got on board the steamboat mechanic and sailed up the Cumberland River again, passing by Clarksville. And that's, this time, he actually stopped here. It was Friday, May the 6th, 1825, and he stopped right there, somewhere on the riverfront. As we're sitting here on the river, I'm thinking about General Lafayette. And he's on this boat, he's headed to his next destination, and he rounds this curve. And here are these thousands, hundreds of people just waiting to see him because he wasn't going to stop in Clarksville. They merely wanted to see the steamboat he was on and just get that little bit of history of being there to say, I saw General Lafayette as he came through Clarksville. And so as he sees all of these thousands of people waiting to just catch a glimpse of him, he decides, let's just stop. And I'll spend 30 minutes talking to these people and sharing my story, the revolution, that I'm sure was a shared story with many of their you know, fathers, maybe their uncles, and in some cases, probably the individual themselves. So Will, we are in Clarksville, Tennessee. Clarksville, where does it get its name? Clarksville, it's, uh, you've heard of the Lewis and Clark expedition? Right. Okay, it's not from that. <laughs> so many people think that that comes from William Clark, of the Lewis and Clark expedition. It's actually his brother who was George Rogers Clark, right, who was a hero during the American Revolution. Okay. That's where we get our name from. What did people here get so excited about his visit? Why did they just run to the riverfront and wave at him and how, did, how were they able to convince him to stop here? And th this is like having Queen Elizabeth come here, a rock star. It was so important. He was such a huge figure in the Revolutionary War. He was this, you know, a, amazing figure of history. And why wouldn't he want to stop? If he was coming through today, 197 years later, I'd want to see him too. <laughs> the city of Clarksville is um, our latest recipient on our market program. What does it mean to you that your city is now part of our Lafayette Trail market program? I'm a historian. I love that visitors are coming here, but I'm happy that people are learning something. Now, everybody that comes down here now is going to learn about Marquis de Lafayette here. And before, they didn't know that. Now they do. Why did uh, Lafayette stop here? That's one of the questions I'm trying to answer, actually, because since the beginning of the history of Clarksville, there's you know, the federal government at the beginning, when there was even no federal government at the end of the American Revolution, there was no money to pay all these soldiers. And a lot of, one of the ways it was done to pay them back was to give land to the new 
territories that were acquired. And so Clarksville got a lot of you know, land warrants around here, people moved here, veterans. Yes, it was underway, but I think the fact that there were many veterans here, or if they had passed away, sons and daughters of the American Revolution uh, around here, I think it helped to play a role in why they were able to assemble a crowd convincing enough for him to stop and honor these people. I think that meant a lot to the locals. All right, one, two, three. Okay. All right. Woo! Why do you think this is uh, important to celebrate history today? You know, I think it has always been and it always will be important to not only celebrate, but know your history. Uh, I think there's a difference there between uh, celebrating and knowing it. And uh, some of the things that we know today are certainly worthy of celebrations. And, and today, Lafayette's visit is no different. What does it mean to you, Tennesseans and people in Clarksville, that Lafayette actually came here to Clarksville? Tennessee wasn't a colony. You know, we were in the outlying areas. So for us to have a Revolutionary War patriot come to Tennessee gives us a connection to the Revolutionary War that we wouldn't have normally had. Why did the Tennessee State Society Daughters of the American Revolution decide to support this endeavor? Well, the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution and the Tennessee Society Daughters have a mission of historic preservation, education, and patriotism. And when you can find a project that really touches on all three of our mission points, it's an incredible opportunity. So these markers are honoring a Revolutionary War patriot. It's helping educate the youth of Tennessee to the importance of the revolution. And it's preserving those stories and that history that's so important to our state. The United States is a, a very divided nation nowadays. It really was also in 1824. And I see in Lafayette's legacy a way to unite the country as he did 200 years ago. Do you see the same thing? Do you think he has a potential if we tell his story? Do, does it have a potential to unite Americans today? Yes, when we think about the contributions that Lafayette gave to our nation, he, he wasn't even a US citizen or someone that was living in the States. Uh, when he came over and helped with the revolutionary cause, he was a Frenchman. And for him to become this person after the Revolutionary War that was sort of a rallying cry for patriotism and nationalism and the love of this country, knowing that he had not been in the colonies prior to the Revolution, really makes you see how he could potentially unite the country again as we move toward our semi-quincentennial. Um, you know, we're 250 years after the birth of our nation and telling the stories of the men and the women that helped create this country, I hope will reunite us in that love of country and the adversity that those individuals fought against to give us this country. I have a surprise for you actually. We're going on a little boat ride. That was not scheduled, but the rain is cooperating somehow. The boat's here and we're gonna have a blast. So let's see what happens. I'm Julian, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. The forecast was horrible. Yeah, yeah when he first, when David first said, "Hey, you want to go with me?" and I said, "Have you seen the rain?" Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm looking at the radar on my phone. It's not it was looking good. good. The steamboat mechanic that is mentioned at the bottom of the sign. Yes. So that's the boat that Lafayette was navigating on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when he came to Clarksville, he stopped here a little bit, half an hour, see the locals, and then when he left. Uh, he proceeded up the river again, so actually down, down river to the confluence with the Ohio. And then on the Ohio, somewhere 
between Indiana and Kentucky, the mechanic actually sunk. It sunk Lost uh, the at the bosom of the Ohio. And like all the newspapers go ballistic around the country. You know, the nation's guest is gone and all his stuff is gone and all his correspondence letters. Yeah. That boat, the mechanic, when he left here, they moved to Smithland, Kentucky. They stayed on the same boat, mechanic. And the newspapers I found mentioned that they thought it would be a good idea to add some ballast on the boat. So they knew that the boat was not adapted for stronger rivers. They knew it, but they, they did a cheap fix. And as a result, Lost the boat sank. <laughs> I mean. So they got him across and then the he next survived. Yeah, the next morning, uh, three boats came by and one of them picked him up and they continued to go to Louisville, Kentucky, basically. So that ended up to be a good story. <laughs> Lafayette's visit to Clarksville was an intense moment of pride for the locals, mostly because by honoring Lafayette and the Revolutionary War veterans, Clarksville was also celebrating the story of its own founding. I think it's a wonderful irony of history that it fell upon a Frenchman to ignite Revolutionary War patriotic feelings in a region of North America that had once been under the control of the French. The fact that Americans never questioned Lafayette's loyalty to their union, that they respected Lafayette's service in the Continental Army, and that they allowed themselves to use him as the living embodiment of the American Revolution all these years later, shows how he was held in such high esteem by Americans back then. And from what I can see around here, he still is to this day. That's it for us today. I want to thank you for following the Frenchman to Clarksville, Tennessee. I will see you on the trail very soon. Thank you for watching. A bientôt.